Good morning. 4.44 in the, in the a.m. It is fortunately not very cold. It's 43 degrees, so it's not going to be too bad for a run. I've actually, this has been my third day of running, and it's been very, very cold. We had frost yesterday. It was gloves and hats, but today it shouldn't be too bad. So let's get started with our coffee, and then we'll, uh, we'll get this day going. Yeah, 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 I've heard it all. You want some cream with your co or coffee with your cream? That's the way I like it. All right, so the first thing I don't want to do today is to start a fire. So usually Jack is in charge of the firewood and he gets up quite a bit later than I do. And what ends up happening is the house has been cold. So I'm gonna make, make a change. I've always said my husband uh, is, uh, the word that I like to use is, is a house band, a band of protection around our homes. And it's, it's my job to make sure that my family's provided for, that they have a warm, comfortable, safe place to live, security, all of those things, food on the table. And how nice would it be uh, if I were to get up a little bit earlier, get the house warmed up, and then when everyone came down, that uh, I had, had, had all that sorted out. So that's something uh, that I'm going to start doing. It's run time. I told you guys yesterday that I was gonna Either, either do running, three miles of running every day, or mountain biking. And actually, you know, I started a couple days early, you know, not with all of the, not with everything, but I have, this is my third day of running, um, and I have been doing the three miles, and I'll tell you, man, it's been tough. It's been really tough. Um, I hate running. Absolutely hate it. But the reality of it is, is that, I guess the nice thing about it is, is, it, is it's easy or, I mean, it, it, it's something anyone can do. You don't have to have a bunch of gear, you don't have to drive to the gym, you can just put your shoes on and go. And so, I gotta be realistic. A man's gotta know his limitations, right? I'm not gonna get in the car and go to the gym anywhere. It's just not gonna happen. But I can do go for a run. So, I thought that I might, my feet might break down a little bit, or it might have some problems, you know, running that far, not, not being uh, really conditioned to it. But I do feel pretty good. So I'm gonna stick with that. We might bike tomorrow, but we'll, we'll see. So I know that there's a lot of you guys following along that and some of you said, hey, you know, I, and I can't run three miles. Well, that's okay. Um, you go out and walk a quarter of a mile, but start, we're gonna keep track of all this, right? We're gonna, we're gonna write it down on a sheet and we're gonna keep track of our weight. And I, I don't like it either, man. I mean, I don't like running, but I like less having a big gut and being out of shape and, and not being a good role model for my for my family and for my kids and and not leading by example. All right, let's do this. So we're gonna keep track of our time, whether you're walking or running. Uh, watch your get a stopwatch or whatever. This little MP3 player I think has a a little timer on it, and we're gonna I, when you need that, you need to see you know you go out and you try to run a half a mile and you're huffing and puffing and you want to give up just keep at it keep at it we're gonna look at ourselves in a week or two or a month and we're gonna see those times coming down and it's gonna it's gonna motivate us so you can see that we're getting progress getting some traction uh, so we'll start start stopwatch here we go Are you ready three hard ones let's do it mile one feeling good This is the part of the run where the demon comes in my head telling me to quit, give up, you're too tired, walk it out. It's very discouraging. That's what I tell him to leave me alone or we'll run it twice. That usually quiets him down. I know it's terrible. I know it sucks. But so does being fat and out of shape. And dying from heart disease and not able to do the things you want to do. So that's three miles in 31 minutes and 21 seconds. It's so slow. That's over 10 minute miles. But it's gonna get better gonna get faster that's why we're gonna track it so we can see those improvements I knew it was gonna be slow I didn't know it was gonna be that slow 
Another thing that I don't like to do is, is I never drink enough water. So in addition to our workouts, we're going to be filling this up. This is a gallon. I'm going to drink this today. I don't care if I leave it till the very last thing of the day. I will not go to bed until this is gone. Stretching is something I've been doing for about um, about four weeks now, and it's helped me immensely. I have had I've suffered from lower back pain uh, for a long, long time. Uh, really, I've suffered for you know, probably the last ten years or so. I have spent thousands and thousands of dollars on um, going to a chiropractor in Portland, who's been has been really good. And when I've uh, I've been in a couple times, I've been in such bad shape that I was unable to. I had to crawl out of bed. You know, I mean, some of you guys have probably can relate to that. I'd go and see him, um, and it's a hundred dollars every time, and I and I indeed would feel better. But two or three days later, right back into the same thing again. So fortunately, uh, just recently, I was there, and he, uh, he was he was he was out, and he had a a young uh, Japanese guy in there uh, that was really uh, specialized in in uh, mus muscles and flexibility, and and he kind of was was working on me a little bit, and he said, you know what, you're one of the stiffest people I've ever met. And, and what he's talking about was primarily my um, my hamstrings. That's the muscle behind your leg. He says, I, th I believe that's the reason why you had back pain. I don't think there's anything wrong with you. Uh, it's you're, you're so tight back there. And so how I understand it and, and what I've come to to really understand or to to know is the truth is I, you, I, we spend so much time sitting, uh, whether we're driving or, or in a chair, and those hamstrings get tighter and tighter. And what, what happens is it pulls your, it starts pulling your pelvis out of alignment. And now when you're bending over to pick things up, it, your back, instead of your pelvis rotating like in the, like it's supposed to, you, your, your back is rotating. And that's why a lot of us get these, these sore backs. So I've, I've come up with a stretching routine uh, that takes about 20, 25 minutes um, and it has helped me immensely. My back pain, I, I've actually, I went through the day yesterday not even thinking about my back, and that was the first time in, in, a, in a long time. One other thing that I've done that I'll show you here in a little bit is, is stop sitting. I can sit uh, for three or four hours editing videos, and so I've got a standing desk. So even though I don't want to, uh, I am, I'm editing standing up, and that's helped tremendously too. So what I'm gonna do is, no one wants, not all you wanna watch a stretching video or my routine, but I, trust me, if you're suffering from lower back pain or, or from lack of mobility, you can do this uh, and it will help you I have no doubt so I'm gonna I'll go through the routine here I'll set that set, separate that in a second video you can watch it after this if you want to uh, for those of you who don't uh, we'll just move on to uh, the next thing so as you guys know today is all about doing exactly what I don't want to do what's gonna guide this video is I'm gonna look around and when I see something that I really don't want to do that I've been putting off for years months or weeks that's the first thing that I'm gonna do and I'll tell you what what I really don't want to do is to clean this kitchen. Guess who's up this morning? Baby D, have I told you how beautiful you look? Have I? Mm. Are you ready for your jug? She likes her jug in the morning. <laughs> mm. I love her. I think the best place to start for doing the things that we don't want to do is is uh, is our, with our bedroom um, and with our our clothing, getting things organized. So this has been my life for for years. This is um, just our chest of drawers here, uh, and uh, the Mrs. W would be the bring the laundry up, and I would take it out of the basket and just and to dump it into these drawers. And every morning, you know, I'm trying to wake up, you know, before not to wake her up. I don't want to turn the lights on. I can't find socks. I can't find anything. It was just really aggravating. Like I want to wear this particular shirt, or I'm looking for that. I never could find it. And is it clean? Is it dirty? And it was always a point of contention. So this is where I started, and I. I got medieval on it yesterday. Actually, I didn't. Um, I didn't know <laughs> how to fold clothing properly. So I went on YouTube and I watched uh, some of the uh, guys in uh, Rangers, Army Rangers, and they showed how the military does it. And so I adopted some of that. And I thought, oh, why not? You know, they know what they're doing. There must be a reason for it. So I started up here. There's my knickers. <laughs> <laughs> drawers. So I, uh, underwear, I fold it and put in one area, a, a kind of a military style. It's not as good as they do it, but that's what I want. So this is where you start. Start from the top and left to right. So I've got all those in there. And then this here, this drawer I saved here, this is where I'm just going to put my EDC stuff. So the stuff that comes out of my pocket, uh, keys, handkerchief, uh, wallet, glasses, those things that I need, I'm not going to be looking for them anymore. So they're going to live in here and they're always going to be in there. And so when I need them, I'll know where they're at. Uh, next, this drawer here, uh, I went to socks. Um, so these are, um, th this was a, it was kind of cool. I, I'd never realized how to roll these up. 
uh, this was a, the way that the army did it, and so I've been doing that too, and that's kind of nice. So now I can see all my different socks. If I need heavy wool socks for wildland firefighting or something thinner for, for running, I did that. Um, and then I like, I really like, I've switched over to wool. I'm only wearing wool. All my t-shirts uh, are, even the short sleeve ones are wool. It's cooler in the summertime, um, and I wear, it's cold up here all the time, and so I really like uh, Icebreaker. It's expensive, uh, but it's so wonderful. This is, I, I got rid of all of the polypropylene that, it just feels gross to me, those synthetics. I like uh, either cotton or I like wool is absolutely the best. So these are like, these are the long, um, the long, basically long underwear. Um, and then the socks go in here. So this stuff here, these are singles and I did, couldn't find mates for them. And so what I'm going to do is if these don't show up in the next couple of weeks or so, they're just gone. They're out of here. And I went through all the socks and got rid of stuff with holes in it and, and got that organized. And then down here, I got uh, uh, trousers. Uh, so I've got, um, these are mostly work trousers here on both sides. So i got those in there. And then the bottom one is uh, maybe nicer jeans, jeans that will wear out. So these are kind of good pants here. And then we got uh, uh, more work pants right there. But everything uh, is organized. I know what I have. The bottom drawer, I'm, I'm ashamed, is, this is the, oh, I can't even show you. This is the junk drawer. That's one of the projects that will be sorted. And everything in there will be put in its place, I guarantee you. All right, over here, just quickly. Uh, it's a closet, and so I went through, I got rid of, well, it wasn't very long ago, six months ago or so, I got rid of four, uh, four huge bags, like garbage bags of clothes that I gave to some boys at the church, our local church, um, that were coming up and could use some good clothes. I did it again, I got rid of three big trash bags of stuff, I got rid of shoes, and here was the thing, you know, I, I would look at stuff and, and say, well, you know, I... That was an expensive shirt. I paid a lot of money for that shirt back in the day, but I haven't worn it for three years and it's all dusty. Get rid of it. If I haven't worn it in the last six months or so, let's say a year, it's gone. So I pared all that stuff down just to the things I like. So I've got, you know, nicer shirts there, some work shirts and then t-shirts over here. Um, same with shoes. I uh, got rid of the shoes except for the ones that I wear and belts and all that. And then I've just got some shorts and things up here. And this was just piled high uh, with pants all wrinkly. It just looked terrible. So this... This was a big milestone for me, and, and is, it, it helps me kind of get my day started right. All right, here we go. It's uh, just a little bit after nine. Uh, it's amazing how much stuff we've got done today. Usually I'm kind of, you know, thinking about up and going around nine, but uh, so far to recap, we've got a, a run in, we've got a stretching, we had a, a nice half, half hour uh, family worship with the Mrs. W and Jack. We had a nice breakfast together. For breakfast, we had steel cut oats, blueberries, uh, Marciano olive, or no, Marci almonds, and uh, what else was there? There's one more thing, an apple. So uh, definitely going for food. I'm really, really cutting back. Man, I, I put on some weight, and I'm just ashamed of the way I've got let myself, the condition I've, get myself, I've got myself in. So what I'm doing for diet, just real quickly, is I'm going to have a nice health, same thing. Steel cut oats, you can't beat that with blueberries and some, you know, fruits, different nuts and things. Uh, for lunch, I'm going to go pretty light. I'm just going to go with like a, a fruit smoothie and a vegetable juice. Mrs. W will prepare that stuff for me out of her garden. And then for dinner, we'll just have a normal dinner. So I, I, I don't mind having a, a Spartan lunch and Spartan breakfast uh, if I have something to look forward to. So I'm not going to go crazy. I'm not going to eat a ton, ton of bread and all that. My portions will be reasonable. But you know, something that's good, you know, steak and potato or... Uh, I think we're having uh, chicken kebabs tonight on rice and you know, so that's kind of the way I look at it like I can I, I, If I have that to look forward to again, then it's not too bad So what we're doing today is remember that the, uh, we're starting off if you're just joining us today And for the next seven six seven days uh, We're gonna be doing lots of unfinished projects and my my I guess the ethos is uh, if uh, I'm gonna look around here and if I don't whatever it is that I do not want to do on the homestead, that's the first thing we're going to do. And I did not want to go down and pick up all the scraps that Jack and I left from the bridge that we built. Remember that last summer. So that's been sitting down there, bothering me. So Jack and I just brought it up. We're going to unload that, and then we're going to get to work on the Hold Holdenhausens. All right, so that's nice to get that done. Uh, we got Jack and I put everything that we have when it comes to the big four by material or the six by material, six by fours, uh, six by sixes, or some six by ten in there. 
all in one place, nicely stickered under cover. So if we need them, um, you know, we know what we have. So I could quickly survey it. I had stuff down in the pasture and I had stuff over here. So uh, it's nice. You know what my, my criteria is for, for today or for this week that I was thinking. So, you know, what, what level of... What, what level of organization is, is adequate? Because uh, you could go crazy. I mean, m when my OCD kicks in, you know, I, can, I can spend all day like on one drawer <laughs> organizing screws. So I gotta be careful. So here's the question I'm gonna ask myself when I look at something. If Christ were to come and visit me, would I be ashamed um, at the condition of this wood pile? Would I be ashamed at the condition of uh, my vehicles and the, the cleanliness of things? And I guess the reason why is, you know, I think that one thing that's really hard for us is let's let's say you buy you buy your uh, son something. Let's say your neighbor, maybe not even your son, maybe your, your neighbor uh, doesn't have a car and uh, can't get to work, and and you you sacrifice and you take from your family resources, you get him a secondhand car and to help him out, right? It happens all the time. And then you're watching him every day; he's not taking care of it. He's not changing the oil. Uh, he's not uh, doing minor repairs. He's not washing it. He's just treating it like treating it terrible. How does that make you feel? Makes you, makes you angry, right? Well, I, I think the same thing, you know, when, if, if, when God in his mercy gives us things and, and blesses us with, with different things, I think there's an expectation to look after him and take care of him. And I am, I'm talking to myself. I'm not preaching to anyone because here I, I've leaving these nice timbers that I've had to lay down there in the sun and, you know, they're worse, they're not as good as they were, would have been had I put them under cover. So, that is, that's the criteria. It doesn't have to be perfect, uh, but at least when I look at something or if someone to come over, I'm, I'm not going to be ashamed or have to make excuses. I guess that's it. I don't want to make excuses for the condition of my equipment, organization of the shop. So let's move on to the next thing. I'm going to have to get a little bit more concise in future videos. We didn't even make it till, what, 930? <laughs> It was so so much to share. So I don't know how this is going to work out. I'll try to be more brief tomorrow. But we got uh, so currently I had to come. I came in for lunch about uh, one o'clock, and I've got a couple hours editing these videos. Uh, but Jack and I uh, got all that lumber moved and stacked, and we built uh, a whole uh, housing right here. As you can see, we got that all completed, and that was uh, oh, just under two and a half cords of uh, getting that. So that you know that's uh, yeah, that's a drop in the bucket for the firewood that we have to stack. But I figured if we do uh, one of those a week or so, uh, you know, in ten ten twelve weeks or you know let's say a couple two three months we have everything stacked in years and years of firewood and that would feel really really good so um yeah boy there's just so much you know one thing i, I want to invite you to do is is that yeah i know a lot of folks are not into well you know the fitness side of it and i'm not going to turn it into a fitness channel but i i think it's important uh the second video that i made that i'm also uploading uh, to the channel and it may come up live after this one uh is that 20 minute stretching routine uh, I mean, I, I know it's, you know, there's such a, so much macho nonsense with guys in, in so many areas, especially in the, in the trades that I used to work in and, you know, looking down on someone, somebody that, you know, does yoga or stretching, anything like that. And, and I'm certainly not going in that direction, but that's just foolish. You know I mean? Not taking care of yourself, uh, not eating well and relying upon, uh, uh, Western medicine and uh, medications, uh, to get you through your, uh, 60s and 70s. That's not the way I'm going to do it. Um, yeah, I am, I'm guilty like you of, of not doing as good as I could, but it doesn't mean we have to continue down that road. And I think, you know, maybe just getting older and being more aware of our mortality, or I think the reality of it is, is just getting older and not being able to get away with that stuff that you did when you were younger uh, starts making you kind of wake up and say, hey, uh, you know, maybe I am going down the wrong road. So, you know, let's be progressive. The progressive man doesn't continue down the wrong road. The progressive man backtracks and goes back. Yes, it's terrible if you took the wrong turn and you've went down the wrong road for miles and miles and miles. But does it make any sense to continue down that road? Is that road going to get you where you want to go? It's not. What you got to do is you got to make a 180 and you got to start heading back. And it may be a long ways back, but you can get to it. And that's the thing you want to do. So I, I really uh, encourage you to watch that video, to save it, to um, use it in the morning. I want you to, to know that you're not alone. Um, if you want to work on your flexibility and mobility and, and alleviate back pain, I think for a lot of you, this will help. 
um, uh, do do that and, and know that I'm doing it with you. And there's going to be lots of other folks too. And uh, who cares what anyone says? Um, if you're embarrassed about it, uh, just go ahead and uh, uh, go up and lock yourself in your room. You don't tell your wife you're organizing your socks like Wrangler Star. <laughs> you can... <laughs> oh, no. Am I referring to myself as Wrangler Star now? Uh, I'm going down the wrong road there. All right. Thanks for watching. Uh, I have, I'm having a great time with this. I hope you guys uh, are following along and, and doing what you can. And uh, we'll see you in the morning.